Mom, that smells great. I am still in the mood for pancakes and sausage this morning. I'm, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I just made this for John. John? Yeah, I'm going to bring it up to him at the bed and breakfast. But I'm starving. Really? That's funny, because you're never really interested in breakfast. You know, why don't you tide yourself over with some cereal, and when I get back, I'll make you something. Mm, cereal. Thanks, Mom. I said I would be back in a minute. So, you really are the low man on the totem pole now, aren't you? Now that your mom has a new son to fuss over, you're kind of like leftover mashed potatoes, huh? Shut up. No breakfast. No Miguel. Look, I told you, for the last time, you are not going to hurt Miguel. I think you have better things to worry about this morning. Miguel is all I ever worry about. Well, I think you should worry about going to jail. And <laughs> jail? What are you talking about? Okay, Charity. Hi, Sam. Dad. Chief Garrison. Hey. What's going on? We were over at Pilar's house talking to some of her neighbors about the fire last night. And the chief here has some questions for you, Kay. Now, do you know anything about how it started? my trusty key to go in and find out. Come in. Good morning, ma'am. What is all this? Your breakfast, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Ethan sent it for you. And he sent this note. Ethan sent me a note? Yes, ma'am. Will you be needing anything else? No, Phyllis, thank you. Maybe he changed his mind. Maybe he does want us to get back together. It's so wonderful to see your handsome face here first thing in the morning, Ethan. I'm so glad you've moved back in. Well, I'm going to stay here as long as you need me, Mother. Thank you. Speaking of needing you, I would really like you to try to get um, Teresa out of the mansion immediately. I, I didn't sleep a wink last night worrying about what that little witch was going to do. Mother, I, I, I wish you wouldn't get so worked up over Teresa. Oh. Look, I've, I've been thinking ab about this situation, and, I, and I've made a decision about our future. Uh, our future? <laughs> Ethan! You can't think that you and Teresa still have a future together. And I heard you get up a couple of times last night. Oh, I'm fine, really. I can't wait to meet your brother at breakfast. Yeah. Guess we'd better get ready. I'm curious to see how much you two are like, or not. Are you all right? I just had another 
memory flash. Me and my dead lover, we were on a boat. You know, this is just so infuriating, this amnesia. I just want to know who I am, where I come from, who my dead lover was. I know, it's frustrating. It is. But you know what? I, I really think that being in here in Bermuda is going to help me find the key to my past. It's almost like my dead lover is here somewhere. Probably better than you. I hope I didn't kick you or anything. No, I didn't feel a thing. So, um, um, excited about breakfast? Seeing your brother? You get to keep your promise and take him home to your mother? Well, we'll see what he has to say about it. I am curious to meet this woman he's with, though. And I would love to know why he's calling himself Brian now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll get all your questions answered at breakfast. Yeah. I guess I am excited. <laughs> I've got a feeling that seeing my brother after all these years is going to change our lives forever. Why would you... I think I know anything about how the fire started. Um, did somebody say they saw me or something? What's going on? Good morning, Miguel. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I was just saying good morning to Miguel. Miguel, don't you have a shirt? Uh, yes, sir. It's okay, well, right you here. put it on. Okay. Your father thought you might know something, Kay. Happy with his breakfast, now I'll make you all some things. Keep Gerson. Morning, Miss Bennett. What's going on? We asked some questions for Kay about the fire at Pilar's house last night. And we're still waiting for an answer. Kay, do you know how the fire started? Wanted you to eat a healthy breakfast for the baby, Ethan. He's only worried about how well I'm eating. Well, that is all right, because I am going to get him back someday. Julian himself gave me the plan to follow when I saw him in hell, and it's going to work. It's going to work. Teresa. What are you doing here? You said you were going to Whitney's. Mama, I told you, this is my house, and I am living here now. Stop it. Stop that crazy talk. Now, you must give up this insane idea of claiming to be Julian Crane's legal widow. Mama, it is not insane. It's the truth. I'm just trying to get what is rightfully mine. Miha, you are on a path to destruction. You will destroy yourself and everyone you love. Ethan, how can you even think about taking Teresa back after all she's done to you, after all the lies she has told you? Mother, I, I'm not talking about my future with Teresa. I'm talking about all our futures. Because whether we like it or not, Teresa is going to be in our lives. What a horrible thought. Whatever you think of Teresa, the fact is she's pregnant with Julian's baby. A baby with crane blood. Ethan, I know that if Teresa has Julian's baby, she's always going to be in our future, but... What if the baby didn't exist? Didn't exist? Yes. What if Teresa were no longer pregnant? Mm. Just another beautiful day in paradise. Yeah, it is beautiful. Yeah. Well, um, I guess I'll take a shower and get ready for breakfast. All right. See you soon. Okay. Goes to Antonio. It's got to convince him to come back to Harmony. Why wait? I'll do it right now. Hey, I'm 
starving, so why don't we get dressed and go grab some breakfast? Okay with me. Wonder who that is. <coughs> No. Okay, I want you to leave this place with me right now and never come back. Teresita, we can make it on our own without this crane money. Well, I'm not leaving. Okay, this is my house. I am Mrs. Julian Crane. Teresa, you know that Ivy will never give up this house. And neither will Rebecca. Do you not remember how ruthless those women were when they were trying to break up you and Ethan? Oh, I remember, Mama. And that is just one of the reasons why I am staying here, because I will not let them win. Teresa, you're up against two formidable enemies. Okay, we may not have any proof of what they did to you, but I am certain that Rebecca was behind it all. I know, Mama. Okay, then, then think. Think what they're capable of. And who knows what they could be plotting to do to you right now. Rebecca, what are you suggesting? That something might happen to Teresa's baby? No. No, of course I wasn't suggesting that. No, I was just, um, I was just asking. I mean, if, if Teresa was not carrying Julian's baby, would she still have a claim to the Crane fortune? Well, no. Especially if I can prove that the divorce Julian got from Mother down in Bermuda wasn't legal. Then Teresa wouldn't have anything. No right to be here at all, isn't that correct? Yes, that's right. But Teresa is pregnant with Julian's baby, so this conversation is pointless. Excuse me, I'm expecting a phone call. E Ethan Winthrop. Uh, what are you thinking? You know, using underhanded tactics Ethan away from Teresa is one thing, but now we're talking about baby killing. Oh, that's not what I'm saying. I wouldn't do a thing like that. I'm just saying that Teresa accidentally fell down the stairs. Mother, that is horrible. You know, you were so much more fun before you developed this conscience. I vowed to myself that there was going to be no more scheming. I'm, I'm just going to be open and honest with Ethan from now on. It's your life. But you better start thinking about a life without Ethan. Because that is exactly what is going to happen. Mother, I have something important to tell you. It's about Julian's Bermuda divorce. What? What did you find out? Um, Rebecca, this is really between me and Mother. It's all right, Ethan. Go ahead and tell me. Just get to the points. Get the legalese. Well, uh, turns out that I was right in questioning the legality of Julian's divorce. There are some loopholes. And, uh, well, the bottom line is that uh, a judge in the States could rule Julian's divorce invalid. Oh, hallelujah. Teresa has no claim at all. No claim on the Crane fortune. Did you see anyone in the vicinity of Pilar's house when you went over to check on Miguel? Or anyone who looked like he didn't belong there or seen running away? No. No, I, I didn't see anyone. Yeah, I told you. If Kay had seen something, she would have told us. Well, didn't any of Pilar's neighbors see anything? No, not a thing. Well, I guess we can close the case, Garrison. It was probably an accident anyway. Hmm. An accident? Yeah, someone must have flicked a cigarette out of a car window and it must have landed on a pile of wood near your house. So you're going to give up just like that? Well, I don't think we should waste the taxpayers' dollars looking for an arsonist when we don't have any leads. Like I said, it was probably just an accident anyway. Miguel and I almost died in that fire. I can't believe you care so little about me. Charity, that's not true. All I know is that if Noah or Jessica or Kay had almost been burned to death, you wouldn't have stopped until you got to the bottom of it. But I guess I'm just a cousin. Sweetheart, that's not true. You know we love you like our own. 
Yeah, and Charity, like Dad said, it was probably just an accident. But what if it wasn't just an accident? What if someone deliberately tried to kill us? I think that she's remembering the fire that killed her mother and almost killed her. Yeah, you're right. Charity, listen to me. Now, if it means that much to you, we'll, we'll, we'll keep investigating the fire. If someone did deliberately set the fire, then we'll find out who it was. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, if you can get a judge here in the United States to declare that Julian's Bermuda divorce was null and void, that would mean that I was still his wife at the time of his death. Therefore, I am still his legal heir. That's what I've been led to believe. And Teresa is dead meat with no claim on the Crane fortune. And that means that your marriage to Julian is null and void, too. I'm sorry, Mother. Oh, it's not over yet, Gwenny. <laughs> what do you mean? If you married Julian while he was still married to Ivy, then that makes your, your marriage just as invalid as, as Teresa's to Julian. Oh, surely you don't think Ethan is the only lawyer in the world who can find loopholes. The first thing we have to do is get rid of Teresa. Well, Ivy, congratulations. It seems you've Yes, it seems I have. But you've lost as much as Teresa, so why are you happy? Well, I'd be happy if the devil himself let the wind out of Teresa's sails. You can get rid of her now, Ivy. And I suggest you do it immediately. Look, ho hold on a minute. Um, I said that I might be able to convince a judge to rule the divorce invalid. And Teresa would have no claim on the Crane estate, yes. Right, but she is pregnant with Julian's child, and I couldn't take anything away that the child might be entitled to. Ethan, we are talking about a girl who supposedly loved you, slept with my husband, a man you grew up thinking was your father, then got pregnant by him and lied to you about it, and you are still worrying about her? Please, where did I go wrong? Mother, you're my client, and I am going to do everything humanly possible to make sure you get everything you deserve. But Teresa deserves something, too. I mean, for all the pain and suffering that Julian has caused her. Pain and suffering? Ethan, what about all the pain and suffering Teresa has caused everyone in this room, especially you? No. Teresa gets nothing. Nothing. Yep. Last night after you went to sleep. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. A humidifier? Yeah, I thought it might help your cough. And I know how much you like tea, so mm -hmm. I thought you could have some tea this morning while you're getting ready. I'll tell you what, I'll go plug the humidifier in, in the bathroom. Okay? Yeah. You are so sweet. I don't know how I got so lucky to have you rescue me from the sea. I'm the lucky one. Hey, where are you going? Oh, I'm just going to go show Antonio uh, Ron, a picture. Can't you show him at breakfast? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't push it, huh? It's probably smart. Hey, do me a favor and hand me that long striped sundress on the bed, please. Sure. You mean this one? Yep. Thank you. Uh, hey. <laughs> Maybe I should you could come out here and get it. Oh, really? <laughs> All right, stop teasing me. Hand it over. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Okay. 
thank you. You know, I haven't seen this playful side of you in ages. It's kind of nice. I never thought I was going to smile again. Not after losing Sheridan. I was wrong. I'm starting to live again. Maybe after spending some time with my brother, I'll have even more joy in my life. You are a fool, Mia. I suppose it's my fault because you've never been able to deal with reality. That is not true. I am dealing with reality right now, Mama. We will win because we have to. We need the money. We do not need the money. Not crane money. Mama, our house almost burned to the ground last night. We have no insurance. How are we going to rebuild? I don't know, but we'll find a way. Oh, yes, yes, I know what that means. That means that you are going to be working tons of overtime right here, right here at the mansion, working for Ivy. And Luis will have to double his shifts, and McGill will have to go to work at the cannery. He won't go to college, Mama. That's not the point that I said. There are other How things... How can you say that, Mama? Do you want Luis to put his life on hold forever? Because remember, he broke up with Beth years ago because he had to take care of our family. And now it might happen all over again. Is, is that what you want? No, of course not. And Luis is going to feel responsible for my baby. And he will sacrifice his own happiness if I let him. And I will not let him, Mama. I will fight for that crane money. And we will live right here, right here in this crane mansion. This is great. Maid set me up. I hope you don't mind. No, please, come in. And Mama, you remember my attorney, Mr. Stumper? Yes, I do. Ah, this is Lopez hyphen Fitzgerald. Looking bodacious, beguiling, and much too young to be this little lady's mama. <laughs> Mr. Stumper, I... I hope that you're not expecting to win a lot of money in this case, because I'm trying to talk my daughter out of it. Much to my consternation, I have to concur and concede. You concur and concede? What are you saying? What I'm saying is that your case is untenable, unwinnable, i.e., a loser. Mother, you can't mean that. What? That I don't think Teresa should get any of my money? Yes. Look, the estate is worth billions of dollars. I mean, you'll hardly miss it if we give Teresa enough to raise the child comfortably. And, well, we could avoid a lengthy, possibly messy trial here. So you're going to offer her a settlement? Yes. Well, I've been thinking about this some time, and I... I think I've come up with something that will be fair for everyone. How can you even think of being fair when it comes to talking about Teresa? I'm not talking about Teresa. I'm talking about the child. And if Teresa takes this thing to court, uh, she could end up winning more than I'm thinking about offering her in the settlement. Well, how much money are we talking about here, Ethan? Well, you know, considering the needs of the child and Julian's responsibility, I was thinking we could offer Teresa $10 million. $10 million? Over my dead body? Hey, good morning, Luis. Hi, Beth. Morning. <laughs> morning. Look, I called down to reserve a table, so whenever you guys are ready, we can all go down together. Yeah, Diane is still in the shower, so how about we meet you guys down there? Well, we don't mind waiting. Okay, I said we'll meet you down there. You don't have to babysit for me. I'm not going anywhere. Okay? Look, I'm not trying to babysit you. Hey, just... Luis, you know what? Let's go get our table. I'm dying for some coffee. Okay. Maybe. Fine. We'll see you downstairs, Antonio. Um, Brian. Hi. Uh...
someone? Yeah. Yeah, it was just my brother telling me what to do again. I know how hard it is for you to deal with him. I just wish you would try. Believe me, I'm trying. There's just a lot of history between us. I didn't mean anything by what he said. I, I, I didn't mean to get Antonio all upset. Hey, try to remember to call him Brian. All right, Brian. All right, I'm going to go back and apologize, OK? I don't want to start our breakfast off on the wrong note. friend are having a nice moment and uh, I don't want to interrupt so we'll just meet him downstairs that's a good idea but hey listen <laughs> you've got to try and watch your temper okay it's so important for you and your brother to try and make up after all those I years I know right I'm not going to let anything get between us again okay What do you want, Rebecca? I want you to think about what you are doing. Look, when you think about the Crane estate, $10 million is just a drop in the bucket. Yeah, he could, you could be rid of Teresa and the baby forever. No, I just I can't let her win. I mean, who cares who wins? Teresa would be out of Ethan's life for good, and he'd be free to be with Gwen, who you know would make him happy. And you get to keep your name and your money. Everyone wins. Except you, Rebecca. You end up with no husband, no name, and no money. So what's in it for you? My Gwenny gets what she wants. She gets to be with Ethan. And isn't that what you want, Ivy? For Ethan to forget all about the little chalupa? Why don't you go in and tell Ethan to offer Teresa the deal? All right, Ethan. If you think it's fair, go ahead and offer her the settlement. Good. I need you to make the right decision, Mother. Well, I'll just call Teresa downstairs right now. Mr. Stumper, what makes you say that I'm going to lose? I'm saying that because it's a factual fact, that is, ipso facto. Because your ex-fiancé has been working behind the scenes trying to get his mother's island divorce nullified and denied. Well, I know that, but you have to do something. You have to work harder, find a way to stop him. That's a no one. No one works harder than Woodrow Stumper when he has an even Stephen chance for victory. But I'm only one man. Ethan even has some of the Crane lawyers working on his side. You see, Teresa, Mr. Stumper would not give up if he thought you had a chance. Absolutely, positively, irrefutably not. But you can't give up, okay? I am Mrs. Julian Crane. Those Crane lawyers should be working for me. What? Uh, Teresa, hi. Uh, I'd like you to come downstairs. Uh, I want to talk to you about your claim to the Crane estate. Yes, I'll be right down. That was Ethan. He wants me to come downstairs to discuss the case, which means they must have something to offer. Well, now that, that would indeed be something of another matter, something that we should be open to discussing. That's right. So obviously your information is wrong, Mr. Stumper. We are going to win this case. So, um, Mr. Garrett, 
Jason, how do you go about investigating an arson case? I mean, do you look for footprints in the yard or, or fingerprints or something? Well, we do all of the above if we believe there was a motive for arson. Yeah, and in most cases, the number one reason for arson is insurance. Oh, so somebody would burn down their home to collect the money from insurance? Well, yeah, I've heard about that happening, but Mama didn't have insurance, so uh. that blows that theory. And without a motive, it's pretty much a shot in the dark to try to find an arsonist, if there was one. I can think of a motive. You can? Yeah. What if... There was somebody, a girl, who was jealous of me. She wanted Miguel all for herself. I can think of lots of girls at school that are jealous. And Grace, can't you think of any girls that are just crazy about Miguel? Well, but if the girl was crazy about Miguel, he was in the house. So why would she buy the fire with him in the house? Oh, I don't know. Revenge, maybe? Revenge? Yes. Picture this. A girl who feels like life isn't fair. Like she always gets the short end of the stick. And she's in love with Miguel. But she can't have him. Because he's with me. And it is driving this girl crazy. Maybe she's even told Miguel how much she loves him. But Miguel doesn't love her back. So she goes over to his house. And she sees me with Miguel. And we're so happy. And we're so in love. <laughs> and so, she snaps. She lights a match. She throws it in the wood pile. She wants to get back at Miguel for not loving her. She wants to get back at me for having him. I don't think that scenario is so far-fetched, do you, Sam? Bacon's burning. So you think that's what happened? That girl was jealous of you and Miguel and set that fire for revenge? I just think it could have happened that way. Charity, did you have a premonition? Um, did you vision somebody? I just don't think that we need to go very far to find the answers to this arson investigation. Do we, Kay? Kay? Teresa, I'm glad your attorney is here because we have a settlement to propose. <laughs> a settlement? How did the question? We settle for nothing less than a whole enchilada. But, in the interest of being reasonable, rational, and at all times, fair. Listen to your offer. Thank you. So what are you talking about, Ethan? Well, my mother understands that Julian took advantage of you and impregnated you. She doesn't want to see you suffer because of what Julian did. But at the same time, she doesn't feel that you're entitled to the, well, um, We've put together a very generous settlement. Please, please, define and declare what you mean by generous. Ten million dollars, plus continued support and a trust fund for the baby. Damn. <laughs> that, that, that is indeed a generous offer. I think we should take this. Teresa, listen to your attorney. Take the settlement. I remember he wants to be called Brian. And try and keep your cool, all right? Huh? All right, I'll try. Look, I just want to talk to him. I just want to get everything straightened out. More importantly, I want to keep my promise to my mother that if I ever ran into Antonio again, I would bring him home to her. I'm sure that you and Brian <laughs> can work things out, okay? Right. Brian. 
Yeah, who knows? Maybe this new girlfriend of his will help me bridge the gap between us. Ready as I'll ever be. Well, I really hope you come to some sort of agreement with your brother you know, about your future with your family. Yeah. You know what? I I'm not so sure that this is the right time. Maybe we should just skip this and go back to St. Lisa's house. Oh, no, 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 no. You are going to talk to your brother. It is time. All right. I guess you're right. Let's go. Hey, was anything wrong? I, I just had the strangest sensation. Almost as if our lives are about to change forever. <laughs> 